it's really like a bird's eye view uh, overview to what is called multicellular factor analysis or MFA. Um, um, as usual from the Arts Club um, Google sheet you can find here on um, column G, the slides and material, you can find the Google doc where I have like all this collection of links that I wanna showcase today. Um, here are some R packages that you can install uh, in the meantime um, um, using these commands. Although <clears throat> I won't actually be running code today um, um, because as you'll see, there's quite a bit of packages involved in MFA. Um, and today the point is just to give a, an overview of like the ecosystem. So uh, I'm gonna start with this um, review called Complemented Cell Taxonomies with a Multicellular Analysis of Tissues. It's a uh, fairly recent from this year. Um, and uh, the lead author of it is uh, Ricardo um, Omar Ramirez Flores. He's an, an alumni from my same undergrad program in Mexico. Um, and through him is how I um, first heard about MFA. Um, in this review, uh, which I already uh, logged in so I could access it. Uh, sorry, the Zoom thing is getting out of the way. Um, they have a little, they have a nice figure here, figure three, that um, uh, illustrates a bit the, uh, what MFA is. So I'm just going to open this image in a new tab so we can zoom in a bit more. So um, the idea uh for the relevance i guess for now for us now of mfa is you have like um uh let's say spatial transatomic data or single cell data um you can um you're going to be able to generate a lot of uh, measurements and you're going to be able to cluster your observations based on like if you're talking on spatial data that will be you'll be clustering your uh your spots based on spatial domains if we're talking about single cell data you'll be clustering it most likely by cell type. Um, now, the idea is you, you generate a lot of data. It doesn't have to be spatial. Um, but from that, you might be interested in a few different things. So you might be interested in finding um, genes that have patterns that are shared across your different cell types here, shown like as uh, like uh, red, blue, and um, sorry, green, blue, and red. Um, uh, they have some shared patterns um, across the different cell types, but also maybe some genes that have um, um, cell type specific or like spatial domain specific patterns. Um, so if you generate <clears throat> single cell or spatial or like other types of omic data across a bunch of different um, donors or samples, um, you'll have like the same cell types measures in um, all of them. And you can provide that information to this MFA framework where you say like, okay, I have a view, which is like the expression measurements for cell type green, the expression measurements for cell type blue or cell type red, um, or equivalently for like special domain green, special domain blue, special domain red. And I, what I wanna find is like uh, for a set of uh, genes, um, or features, I want to find like the different weights for them to then uh, build a latent space where we'll have uh, a set of factors across our uh, different um, samples or different donors. Um, and with that, you're going to be able to build what they call a multicellular program that is um, that resumes how different groups of genes in different cell types or different spatial domains are uh, contributing together or being coordinated together to um, build like this expression factor. And that expression factor uh, will be, um, like some of these um, factors will be associated with um, the um, donor level uh, characteristics, let's say like your donor groups. Um, so that's like the, this uh, overview cartoon in this uh, recent review. Um, and like, you'll see similar cartoons across like a few of the papers. So um, that was like um, a paper from 2024. 
you might ask yourself, like, well, have people used this framework in things that maybe are relevant to us? Um, and so there's this paper from um, 2021 um, 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 where they applied uh, the um, MFA framework, or um, here they call it like multi-omics factor analysis. Um, that's just a different name for the same thing. Um, uh, where they applied it to um, integrate uh, multiomic data. What was the multiomic data that they had in this paper? It wasn't spatial, it wasn't single cell. Uh, what they had is, let me go to the figures. Um, here, figure three. Um, they measure like proteomic data, near inflammation, metabolomics, um, like lipodomics um, and a few other measurements. And so this goes back to the origins of this framework. Um, this um, multi-omics factor analysis framework or MOFA, MOFA was first developed to integrate um, um, data from different assays that you observed from the same set of donors. Uh, it was made also flexible such that like you don't actually have to have measurements across all of the different assays for every single donor. So let's say we could have um, a donor might have information for proteomics and neuroinflammation and metabolomics, but it might be missing the one carbon and the lipidomics data. Um, so it's flexible in that way. Um, it can be used also, for example, for like attack and, and, and um, an RNA. So like um, a lot of times when in our work when we mention multium, we're thinking about um, attack plus um, RNA data generated from the same cells. Um, um, uh, but like, um, like multi-omics can be like um, more generally any other type of omics. So they applied this here, uh, this MO, uh, um, alpha framework. But at some point in this paper, they say like, well, the interpretation of, um, of these uh, factors is kind of like, um, like a principal component um, analysis. Now, um, in this paper, without all of that data, what they were able to do is um, um, they were able to build like predictors for the presence of Alzheimer's disease as well as the presence of cognitive decline that um, had like high predictive power. Um, um, like higher than other models that they had before. And also um, later on, they were able to identify four different molecules that actually influence the most this, these factors, which then influence like this prediction uh, model. Um, so that was a nice application, um, like from published in 2021. So um, if we go a bit further back in time, the first like the, the paper that describes the multiomics factor analysis framework was published in 2018. Um, is this one over here, um, led by um, Ricard um, Argelegat um, from the Oliver uh, Stiegel lab um, with, uh, in collaboration with like uh, Wolfgang Huber and other people. Wolfgang Huber is like one of the founding members of Biconductor and he works at the um, European Molecular Biology Laboratory in Heidelberg. Um, um, so he's a you know pretty um, you know his lab is the one that developed DSIC two and other things, uh, HG HGSIC and a, a few other things that we use a lot. John Marioni has also the, um, like he's one of the first people that was involved in um, in single cell. Um, so they had been thinking for a while about you know. They have access to some of the latest uh, technologies and data sets. Um, and um, I guess they had access to multi ohm data. And they, they're the ones that de developed this, this framework where here, like you have uh, in this cartoon, you have assays for different types of ohmic technologies, uh, where you have your, in this case, they flip the samples and features. Um, so they have the samples in the rows, features on the columns. Um, but basically it's this idea like you can uh, find the different weights uh, for each of those features that you have to um, 
summarize all that information into factors, and then you can build this data space that has factors by samples. Um, so um, um, this 2018 paper has um, um, software associated with it, and it's called um, MOFA, or M-O-F-A. Um, um, I like, the, I mean, the repository is available, but it has like officially been de de deprecated at this point. They have a type over here. Um, 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 but like, um, um, this is, I guess, like a bit of the history of things. Now, uh, they already mentioned there that like it has been deprecated in favor of something that is now known as MOFA2. However, the paper describing it uh, talks about MOFA+. Plus. Um, that was the name they had it upon, I guess, when they published it, and then later they, they renamed it to MOFA2. Mm -hmm. um, so now, these are the paper appeared in 2020, um, and you'll see that a lot of people that, when they're signing the MFA framework, are going to be signing the 2018 paper and the 2020 paper. Um, um, and so, um, the, we'll rec you know, this figure over here from the 2020 paper is very, very similar to the one from the 2018 paper. They just rename the things as views. So um, this concept of a view uh, is basically like an input assay that you provide. Um, 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 and so it could be like your protomic data, your like uh, transcriptomic data, your, um, I don't know, lipidomic data, et cetera. Um, you'll be able to build those factors. Um, ideally, those factors then uh, will be associated with like some of your uh, some of your groups. Um, um, and so, uh, MOFA Plus, the paper, um, described a piece of software called uh, MOFA Two, which is available on Bioconductor, um, which is this uh, software over here. Um, now, um, it has a few different vignettes, um, which we'll go into a little bit later, but um, something that is pretty useful is if we go to their GitHub website, um, they have a link here to um, another documentation website um, separate from the one from Bioconductor. So this website actually is a lot more complete than the one from Bioconductor because uh, it has a lot more information. If you remember, um, um, documentation on back conductor has to be compiled every time they, they test the package. So over here, they have actually a lot more things that probably would take um, longer to run um, and don't fit in, in, in a, in a back conductor package. Um, so this is like, um, if you're getting started, this is probably where I would look at. Uh, we'll notice over here on the implementation that they say that actually MOFA um, has been implemented, like this, sorry, we have a type here, this MOFA 2 as implemented in Python as well as R. And the original MOFA was also implemented in Python and R, uh, although like both of those versions are no longer maintained. Um, so uh, if you want to use, uh, you know, if you prefer using Python, I know a few here prefer Python, you might want to check the, the MOFA Py 2 documentation. Um, now, something that I find like really interesting in this website is a set of tutorials where um, yeah, they explain like a few different things with these packages, but they also have actual uh, you know, example use cases um, um, on different uh, types of scenarios. Um, um, so like this, these examples are fairly um, um, comprehensive um, and you'll see a lot of things on them. So let's, um, um, I'm going to skip showing one of them for now, um, just because, um, um, yeah. Uh, but yeah, over here, you can see here, like they have like a multi ohm attack with gene expression, um, uh, referencing to, to the multi ohm data that, um, that we have. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, I think there could be a lot of applications where this framework um, uh, can be applied to. Now, under the FAQ, something that it will be important is how many samples do I need? And they say here that like uh, these, useful, these models need at least 15 samples um, 
to be useful. Um, so this is just something to keep in mind. Like we have some data sets where, uh, for example, the special DLPFC data set that we recently published, that one only has data for 10 different donors. Um, uh, so there could be data sets that we have, but we don't have the sample size that they recommend. Um, that's just something to keep in mind when you run. Um, thinking of generating data or applying this framework to data. Now, um, this website over here, like it includes something called MOFA cell, um, which is actually the next link I have over here. Um, uh, so there's a paper from 2023 called Multicellular Factor Analysis of Single Cell Data for Tissue-Centric Understanding of Disease. Um, it was published in eLife in 2023. Um, and you might like look at the author list and think like, well, they don't overlap a lot with the authors of MOFA 2. Why is it all documented in the same place? Um, I mentioned that Walt Van Huber works at the European Molecular Biology Laboratory, high level, um, uh, and like Julio Saez Rodriguez, his lab um, was originally based at Heidelberg University. Heidelberg, the seat itself is like fairly small, has like maybe 80,000 people. Um, um, uh, or at least when I visited in 2010. Um, so like they, I think they they met each other and like um, um, uh, Julio's lab has actually uh, developed a lot of methods based on um, MOFA2. Uh, so they've expanded the universe of things that you can do with that. Um, and at this point, like they're basically leading a lot of great work um, in this, in this, um, in this uh, specific field. Um, so if you go to the figures over here, uh, was uh, this paper led by Ricardo has um, you know, similar cartoons where now, in this case, they've adapted the MOFA2 framework um, to work uh, with single cell data. Um, and the way they did this was they said like, okay, if you have your different cell types, um, Something you can do is you can suitable the data uh, for each of those cell types. And that suitable data is what you provide as the different input views um, to then build your, um, you know, apply them of a framework, you get your factors. This is where we see the first time this type of um, illustration where we have uh, shared and cell type specific um, uh, features for the different cell types. Um, so these, these features are genes in this case. Um, now, um, uh, you can also apply it to, um, uh, to spatial data, but um, before I mention uh, the details about that, with single cell data here, um, they have an example where they have three different, um, well, I guess this is spatial data, but um, they have like three different um, clusters um, or locations where they're interested in. Um, Actually, sorry, this is actually, sorry, I'm just reading the title. This was actually single cell data uh, from different parts of the heart um, um, where they extract um, single cell information from different pieces of it, um, which are uh, affected on their acute heart failure. Um, so they actually have, um, in this case, um, uh, seven, I think, uh, cell types. Um, that they obtain data for. And um, this little heat map over here is a heat map that we'll be able to make using um, uh, the multi cellular R package that they developed. What it has at the top in orange is a heat map where um, we see one row per view. So in this case, they provided seven different cell types as a seven, seven input views to MFA. Um, the colors are uh, reflecting the percent of variance explained um, um, uh, for each of these uh, factors by the different views. Um, and so like factor one is actually influenced by like a lot of different cell types um, with like PC, CM being like the two strongest ones. Whereas like factor three here is like uh, most influenced by the BSMC view. Uh, um, that's the schema at the top. 
Then we have another heat map in purple that shows the um, um, minus log and p-value association of each of these factors with donor level covariates. So here they have like condition as one covariate and then batch as a second covariate. And we can see that factor one is um, um, significantly associated with, um, with the condition. Um, then they have a third key map that has colors that go from uh, light, sorry, dark brown to um, um, light white, then to um, uh, dark green. This key map over here now shows you like all of the different samples that were provided as input. And um, you see like the different factor scores, whether like they're positive or negative of like the different samples. Um, this, this last scheme map is annotated with like the condition uh, groups as well as the batch groups. So we can see that like factor one is really separating this green group, um, this green condition group from the red condition group with the blue condition group being a little bit in the middle. You can actually show that like with like a box plot in here in panel C where you have that factor value um, on the Y axis. And then you have uh, box plots for each of your three different condition groups. Um, so this is kind of what you want to find where you find like a factor that is um, associated with your uh, donor level covariates of interest. Um, sometimes you might need like a combination of factors um, 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 to, to see like that association. Um, but once you find that, then you're like, okay, let's now try to interpret what that factor one is, right? Um, so, um, um, like there's a few different things that you, they do later for trying to interpret factors. And I think that's like a very like, um, active area of development. Um, one thing you can do is, um, you can look at the different signature genes, um, in that factor or like over here in panel B, they, they looked at, um, different, um, Gene ontology terms that were enriched among the signature genes. What are the signature genes? They're going to be the genes that um, um, have high, um, that highly influence a factor. Um, so we go back to to this picture over here. They're going to be the genes that um, you know have like either like low or high factor weights for uh, for that factor. Um, so that's how you. Uh, there, you're gonna have like uh, some shared genes across the different input views, as well as as well as some like um, genes that are specific to each of the input views. Um, so that's how you can try to interpret uh, these factors, and they have a few different um, analysis that they do with that. So um, this is really the first paper, or like the paper that describes how you can adapt the MOFA two framework that was developed for uh, multi ohm data, where like you have like different omics, to then actually applying it to um, single cell data, where um, uh, by definition you got the cell type measurements uh, from the same uh, donor directly. Um, um, now, there's this set of extensions that um, uh, Ricardo and Julio's uh, group are like working on. Um, uh, but uh, one of them is like, if you apply this data to, um, to, um, to spatial data, uh, so I'm gonna go back to this cartoon over here that we had before. Uh, with spatial data, something that you can do is for each of these spots, you can also ask like, what is the composition of like the different cell types in that spot. Um, if you have that, then you can basically, you're basically creating a different input view that you can provide. You could also like try to summarize um, like uh, spatial neighborhood patterns that you see. Um, and that you can also provide it as a separate input view. Uh, so you can combine like gene expression level measurements from like the pseudobulk spatial domains with like uh, composition and organization information that you that you generate. Um, so all of that can be provided as, as different input views. Um, but um, um, there's more for us to learn about how they actually do all of this work. Um, cool. So um, MOFAS Cellular uh, has its R package over here. It's not on, it's not on a biconductor um, 
uh, uh, from what I can tell, but um, uh, it's uh, fairly well documented. And uh, it has a vignette over here, which is how do you actually use this um, framework to analyze single cell data? So out of all of the uh, out of all the documentation that we saw on the MoFA two website, um, eventually, I mean, if you click the links there, you can eventually find this one too, um, and it will show like how do you start with your single cell data, pseudo bulk it, and eventually build um, 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 build this heat map over here using the functions that they have. Um, um, so um, you'll probably use, uh, if you're applying the MOFA framework or MFA framework, you're going to potentially be using MOFA Cellular, uh, which if we look at the, um, um, sorry, we look at uh, the GitHub repository for it. Um, I guess I didn't put the link. Um, um, if we look at uh, the internal code for the package, we'll see that on the description file, it's actually, uh, it depends on MOFA2, which is that bioconductor package that we saw earlier. So um, MOFA Cellular uh, just helps you like um, generate that, uh, um, uh, like your set of factors, your latent space. Once you have it, you might have to then use MOFA2 uh, functions um, so let's go back to MOFA2. Um, um, mm -hmm. um, um, okay. Sorry, um, we didn't prepare this uh, as well, but like um, MOFA2 has functions for like, um, for example, making heat maps of your uh, signature uh, genes. I just briefly saw it over here. Yeah, so you could be like, hey, for my view number one, for this factor, show me like the signature genes, like in this case, the top 20 ones. Um, so you can make a little heat map with that. Um, but what I was looking for was the, um, um, uh, um, MOFA2 is the one that implements the, um, uh, the gene set enrichment analysis tools, but I don't, I'm not finding the documentation of that here on the, on the Bioconductor version. Um, maybe it's on the, um, um, maybe it's over here. Anyways, um, I'll find it later uh, where like you can, um, um, they have functions for like, um, oh yeah, here it is, gene set enrichment analysis. Cool. Um, okay. um, yeah, they have these functions where you have, you provide your, your um, model and like you can find like the different genes, um, gene ontology terms associated with like each of your factors. Um, uh, that you can make, make do like kind of like, um, some little graphs there. Um, um, but um, um, yeah, so um, there's a lot of documentation out there. It's just like scattered in like different places. So it might take a bit of um, uh, poking around for you to find like the different things that you're interested in. Um, once you've built your, um, your uh, model with uh, with MOFA Cellular, you might want to look at the different um, use cases that they have here, where they explore um, um, the results of different um, models that they built with with this framework. Um, um, so, and I and I get the impression that like for some of the applied papers, um, they've written custom code that is not part of any of these packages for for exploring um, the results. Um, oh, now um, MOFA Cellular was developed by uh, Ricardo and um, as part of uh, Julio uh, Sainz Rodriguez lab. Um, 
But uh, th that lab, they also developed uh, Liana as well as Liana Plus. Um, now, Liana Plus, um, um, there's this nice little paper over here, which um, I like this figure, uh, figure one, that is like a more updated version of all the things you can do. Um, so if you have like special data, uh, with your spatial data, you can find like um, information about like local neighborhoods as well as like some global um, neighborhood data. You might have some single cell data. Um, these are basically different input views that you can provide to multi-view factorization uh, with um, you know M of FA. Um, uh, Non-negative factor. Um, uh, um, um, and all, uh, some other methods, they also appear here. Um, uh, some of those methods, you can find factors like at one view at a time. Um, but like what Liana does is, um, or Liana Plus, sorry, is that it integrates information with like um, Liana, where like they have created information about ligand receptor pairs. Um, so this is like if you want to. Uh, work toward a cell-to-cell -cell communication analysis, um, and you want with either single cell and or spatial data to see like um, uh, where, which cell types are expressing your ligand and which type cell types are expressing your uh, receptors, um, and then are they like uh, spatially um, um, like are they like uh, working together spatially or not? Um, so Liana Plus is. Uh, uh, we use it in our special DLPFC project for doing some of the cell to cell communication analysis. But like, um, like it's a package that uses a lot of these other packages behind the scenes. Um, uh, so it uses Liana, but also uses like, um, um, you know, MoFa and all of that. Um, so um, I don't know exactly how they decided it, but like um, they actually have a Python Im implementation for all of this. And uh, uh, Liana, the Python version, also implements basically a lot of the same things that are implemented in MoFa Cellular R. Um, so uh, like Ricardo, he was explaining to me that like the Python version can do the cellular bulking like a lot faster than the R version. Um, um, but like, um, then after that, like basically whichever, um, programming language that you're more familiar with, that might be the one you want to use. So, um, like we saw how, um, you could make that little heat map, like with, with, um, of a cellular R, uh, that internally uses the complex heat map package here with Python, you get a different version of it. I personally like better how the R version looks. Um, but um, you can do it also with Python. Um, so you get like a, a similar uh, heat map. Um, um, so uh, like, I think like, uh, you know, Julio and team, they've uh, really like um, invested in having both R and Python solutions for like um, their, or implementations for their uh, methods. Um, and they've done a lot of great work, like uh, documenting, showcasing like different um, uh, scenarios where you have like different multi-omic data. Um, um, it's just that like at this point, like the universe of documentation that they have is fairly big, and um, you might have to like look into all, all of these packages, like all of the vignettes they have to find like the specific example that might be more relevant to what you're doing. Um, so that's why I wanted to give this this uh, overview, um, and later on we can dive into in like in other future art club sessions we can dive into specific packages that they have, um, 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 and I like some of the um, some of the work that they've done in uh, for interpreting what a factor is. Um, cool. So that's um, that's all I had for today. And with that, I'll stop the recording and we'll see you soon.